The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Yes. So. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Now, now we start the webinar. So <laughs> please. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Okay. That's so why many um, people are here. Right. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, I'll just go back to the beginning and then start yeah. again. Sorry, sorry about that, guys. Um, all right, so now, now we're getting to it. Um, well, thanks for everyone for coming um, to um, this um, Midas Academy. Um, I'm going to talk about how I designed this three span steel composite bridge. Um, I'm Alice, a structure engineer at ACOM, and um, this was a project that I did back in my first year. Uh, at work, so I'm very excited to share this with all of you. Um, hope you will find some uh, interesting points and useful tips and tricks um, from the session. So um, before we start, I just want to give a quick introduction about myself. I graduated from the University of Auckland back at the end of 2017, studied civil and environmental engineering, specialized in structural engineering. Then I started work at AECOM as a structural engineer. Majority of my work involves bridges and civil infrastructure design, along with helping project and design managers with project management and design management. Over the course of three years at ACOM, I have peer reviewed a number of highway bridges and designed two pedestrian footbridge in Hamilton and Auckland. Some of the notable projects that I got involved with includes the City Rail Link and Transmission Gully. I'm experienced in both squirrelage and plate modeling using Midas Civil Final Element Software Package. And in today's webinar, I will be discussing one of my peer review work in the Pamio Busway Bridge. I uh, hope everyone's looking forward to it. So uh, a bit about my company. Um, AECOM is one of the largest engineering consultancy in the world. It has over 77,000 employees in more than 400 locations worldwide. It is one of the largest and the most diverse provider of technical professionals and construction services. According to the ENR ranking, it ranked as number one design firm in the world. It has a well-established graduate development program, which I personally participated during my first two years at the firm and had this fantastic experience. Recently has won um, City Rail Link, uh, the largest transportation infrastructure project in New Zealand, along with two other design firms. And I was fortunate to have the opportunity to work on this project as a bridge engineer. Um, so, in today's uh, content, I will be first going through some of the project information and getting into the detail um, of steel composite wizard, um, time dependent materials, boundary conditions, traffic loading, response spectrum, temperature loading, water flow, and wrap up the presentation with UIS and SLS design check in accordance with the New Zealand Bridge Manual. Um, the bridge we're going to discuss today is located in Pamu, Auckland, New Zealand, across the Tamaki River. It is a part of the Auckland East Busway project. Our client is the Auckland Transport. 
and the designer for this bridge is from Becker. The design feature of the Pamir Busway Bridge include provision of 3.3 meter wide bus lane and a 4.97 meter wide footpath and cycleway, incorporating viewing platform at each abutment and pier on the northern end of the proposed busway bridge. The scope of the project include eastern and western abutment retaining, approach embankment, better slopes, and shared path connecting the rotary walkway on the northern side of Pakranga Road. For this bridge, my role is being the peer reviewer, reviewing the design of the three-lane steel composite bridge. It is a three-span steel composite I-girded bridge for a total of 206.5 meter long um, and it spans um, 66.5 meter on the end and 73.5 meter as a main span. It is supported by abutments on either end and two large piers with eight pile each between spans. The superstructure comprised of two parallel composite steel eye girder supporting the road carriageway, footpath and cycleway with no vertical structure above the deck level. The girder are hunched, varying in depth from approximately 3.8 meter over the river pier to approximately 2.3 meter at mid-span, um, both for economy and shape for architectural reasons. Steel cross girders are provided between the main girders at 3.5 meter centers. The girders are continuous over the pier. Racing between girders is provided at 10.5 meter from the piers to limit the buckling length of compression flange. The deck slab uh, consists of 125 mil thick, thick uh, pre-cut concrete deck panel spanning between the cross girder with the 125 mil thick casting in situ concrete top plane. This shows the cross section of the bridge with the pedestrian cyclists on the left and the two bus lane on the right. We were commissioned to check the capacity of the superstructure, substructure, connections, and the service brackets of the bridge. On this job, my main role is to build the global model for the bridge superstructure and substructure analysis, which I will cover from the next slide. So before we dig into the, the um, steel composite with, uh, let's take a look at the overall workflow I used when building the global model together using MIDAS Civil. I first set up the material and section properties. Because the section need to be tapered, I select the composite steel I section under tapered group. It is important to check the properties to make sure everything is correct. Then I use the steel composite wizard to set up the main superstructure on the bridge. It offers some very handy options for setting up the model, and I will be covering more in details later on in the presentation. The third part is to build a full geometry of the bridge. As steel composite wizard only covers a portion of the model setup, I had to use the common tools under node element tab to build the rest of the bridge. Once I completed the full geometry of the bridge, I started applying various loading, time-dependent material for construction staging, and conduct adding value analysis for seismic loading. Then I applied the moving load to simulate the forces that the bridge experienced from vehicles. It is worth to run the model a couple of times when building it to make sure that the model behaves as expected. Finally, I create load combinations using the New Zealand bridge manuals to complete the models for design shape. The steel composite wizard start with the basic geometry and with the options of including substructures. For this bridge, the general geometry is set up with the piers to simplify the process of building the rest of the substructure, such as power caps and piles. One tip for using the wizard is to identify and input all the material and section properties in MIDA Civil before using the wizard, so it is faster to set up the geometry, loading, and staging. When you set up the wizard, you can save it by clicking the Save As button down at the left bottom end of the display form, as shown uh, over here. The input parameters can be obtained from um, design drawing, which we used uh, for peer review. The elastic length stiffness um, defines the boundary condition between the peers and superstructure. A common value we use for stiffness is 1 to the power of 9 or 10 to mimic the full fixity property 
of the um, peer bearings. Depending on your bridge structure, there's also an option to turn on the peer caps. Before uh, our modeling, uh, we decide not to. The bridge is designed with two main eye beams running across the bridge. It is symmetrical from the middle, so setup for bridge module has been relevantly easy. The wizard provides a tutorial guide for some of the parameters, so it's very straightforward for input. When finished set up the geometry of the bridge, it is good practice to save the wizard and run it. Check that the output geometry is what expected. A quick run through. Um, in this tab, you can allocate material properties um, of the thick girders and bracing along with the thick thickness. There's only um, two eye girder running through the entire length of the bridge. So you can see on the um, right side, um, there's two girder with this 3.3 um, to 5 meter offset. A useful tool too, you can see down the um, left corner is um, you can copy over the girder geometry from um, one, span, uh, one girder to the second girder. So this way it saves you a lot on the time when um, trying to build two um, girders that are symmetrical. The bracing details allow you to define bracing type and shape. Because the cross brace on the bridge is 3.5 meter away from the pier, so I use spacing distance to define the position of the bracing. This part of setup automatically generates the boundary condition and geometry of the bracing, which I use to speed up the process later on when I refine the detail of the bracing. In the brace detail menu, you can select different bracing type and details. For this bridge, there are two types of bracing, the cross beams and bracing at the pier, which you can see on the right hand side. The guide provides you with a detail on those items mentioned. I use inverted V brace for the design and later on adjust the position to suit the design. This function allows you to set up various types of bracing, which saves a lot of time from manually drawing the model. Over here, you can input typical design force, which will save you time afterwards. The wizard allows you to add loads such as self-weight, brick concrete, barrier. Because it's a highway bridge, live loads such as traffic load was also considered. And you can add on the live load over here. I suggest people to play around with this section of the wizard and see what loading output you get in the actual modeling space. This will provide you with some confidence around the actual load application using the wizard. I use the wizard to define traffic play and vehicles save time assigning them later on in the process. The display, display form from both tabs are the same uh, as applying moving load in the modeling space. So there's actually no difference. The construction staging for the bridge consists of 10 steps with two stage of thick pore sequence. The wizard allowed people to specify negative moments only, which correlate to the middle good span length shown in stage four. The model captures all construction staging of the bridge to capture all design scenarios through the full construction of the bridge. Because the construction sequence for this bridge is quite complicated, I also use steps in construction staging loading to capture different timing for the concrete pore. The construction staging for this bridge reflects the actual work. If you need to create the construction staging from the model from scratch, then a good practice is to ensure you have the correct structural group, boundary group, and load group when setting up the model. The process for modeling can be very tedious if you don't set up the groups correctly from the beginning. So as what the picture showed, we first activate the substructure of the bridge with piles, pile cap, pier, and abutment. Activate along with the source springs and elastic links. Then activate the girder in the hogging moment zone. Make sure that the steel girder is still in the non-composite stage. Then activate the abutment girder span when it's launched from either side of the abutment. Ensure it's a non-composite stage, non stage as well. Finally, place the main 
mid span girder, make sure that the girders are acting in the composite at the pier. Then after 28 days, activate the composite stage for all the girders to complete the construction staging. One of the key parts for setting up the model construction stage is the composite sections for CS. It is important to make sure that all components type are either composite or tapered composite when setting up your model material and section properties. The H value and long terms are automatically generated. So you can input a calculated arbitrary value and then check updates or um, H and update all long term once you complete the setup. It is critical that you do this step correctly as it can significantly affect the result you get. The steel composite bridge wizard is a great tool to help the designer build the superstructure of the bridge, as well as applying some basic loading and construction staging for the model. However, it comes with some limitations. For the three span steel composite bridge I built, there are some work required after using the wizard to complete the modeling. The first part is building the substructure of the bridge. While the wizard provides a great starting point for building the substructure, the pier cap, um, building the superstructure, the pier cap, pier, pile cap, and piles need modeling in the actual modeling interface. The thick extension on either side of the bridge also need modeling, as well as the bracing underneath the deck. Those components were built after the wizard. The second part is to apply the tapered section group for the superstructure and substructure of the bridge. Due to the unique geometry of the bridge, I applied tapered section group to the steel girders and pier to finalize the geometry shape of the bridge for the modeling. The third part is to apply the composite information, such as effective width, scale factors, and composite span information. This can be found under the structure tab, composite bridge. The effective width of the bridge is modeled in MIDAS to capture the effect of shear lag. This is compared with manual calculation from the Australian standard 5100.6 to ensure that the model input are equivalent to the Australian standard. Our comparison found that the effective width calculated from the model are very similar to the effective width found from the standard. This was used for the analysis. The time-dependent material is a useful function in MIDAS Civil to capture the creep and shrinkage loading. The creep and shrinkage functions allow, to, allow you to input parameters from the bridge menu. There are changes in the latest edition of the New Zealand bridge menu on the drawing basic shrinkage strain, which can be easily adjusted by select user-defined options over here. To apply these functions, you need to first define the concrete material, then add in creep and shrinkage and composite str a compressive strength button. After that, you need to click on material link to link materials that you want the time dependent properties. The shrinkage uh, and creep loading is captured after you apply construction stage loading. The boundary condition for this steel composite bridge is quite standard. The bearing design philosophy are as follows. At pier, all the bearings are assumed to carry an equal portion of longitudinal and transverse loading. At each abutment, the guided bearing is assumed to carry all the ultimate limited state status or serviceability limit states 3A case in the bridge manual for transverse loading. The guided bearing on either end of the bridge is allowed to fail under large seismic events, which in this case, the concrete shear key will be engaged to provide transverse restraint. In Midas Civil, I model the bearing restraint using elastic length. I use a stiffness value of one to power 10 to mimic the fixity condition in the bearing. The elastic length is a good boundary condition function that allows you to find the resultant load easily through the result table under result tab. Having the elastic link allows you to output the force that the bearing experience from the URS and SLS loadings to be able to compare 
And for our case, it's to compare for the peer review with the bearing table that the designer provided. To apply soil spray to the piles, I use a particular workflow to speed up the process. And hopefully some people find this useful for quicker application of soil spray to the piles. So after you construct the geometry uh, of the model in my decibel, I will go to renumber element ID under the structure tab to renumber the pile node ID in sending orders. Then go to boundary type and click on point separate to apply soil spray. I would input an arbitrary number such as one to the stiffness of the spring for all pile springs. So a table is produced. Now for construction staging, make sure to define the boundary group for all the pile soil spring so you can easily add boundary group to construction staging later on. In the point spring table, I will order the pile in ascending order by the node ID. This way, all the pile soil spring are in the order from the top of the pile to the bottom of the pile. Then I would copy and paste the soil spring value from an Excel spreadsheet that contain all the soil spring value provided by geotechnic engineer to um, the point spring sport table. This makes sure the application of soil spring value much easier, particularly for people with um, structures that contains a lot of piles. The traffic loading in the New Zealand bridge manual consists of normal vehicle load and over load vehicle load. The application for loading is quite straightforward with 120 kN XL load spaced 5 meters apart and a UDL of 10.5 kN per meter for normal vehicle load and 240 kN XL at 5 meters apart with a UDL of 10.5 kN per meter for the overload vehicle load. There is a reduction factor depending on the number of load length in the dynamic load factors depend on the type of structures and the clear span length. So now let's have a look at the application of traffic loading in MIDAS civil. I choose Canada load for moving load application as the reduction factor between Canada load and New Zealand bridge manuals are the same. Transverse lane optimization are turned on to conservatively analyze the bridge subject to moving load covering all case scenarios. Application of vehicle loads on pedestrian cycle lane as well as to simulate the worst case scenario. This is applied on all three lanes on the bridge and will capture it in the result and design chip. The fine moving load case allows you to set up different loading scenarios with different vehicles on different lanes. When checking the result for moving load case, you can use the moving tracer to see which vehicles and load case is causing the critical moment shear demand on the bridge. This will give you a bit more confidence that the moving load case makes sense when predicted scenarios. There are two types of seismic loading that is considered for seismic, horizontal and vertical seismic load. The horizontal and vertical seismic load is dependent on spectral shape factor, hazard factor, which is based on the regions you're in, the return period factor, and the near fault factor. The application of horizontal seismic load is dependent on the natural period of the structure, which I use eigenvalue analysis in my decibel. Slides show the elastic site spectra formula in the New Zealand um, 1170.5 standard for both horizontal and vertical seismic load, as well as the spectral shape factor. The picture down at the left bottom color is the response spectrum that we use for the bridge. In order to add seismic load in your analysis, the first thing you do is add eigenvalue analysis. Depending on the structures, you can adjust the number of frequency you want the analysis in order to get a higher mass participation ratio. After you find the natural period of the structure through eigenvalue analysis, you can use standards to calculate the response spectrum for the structure, which feeds into the RS functions in my decibel. I usually have a separate spreadsheet to calculate the profile and feed into my decibel. After you add the RS functions, you can create low case where you can specify the direction of the seismic acceptation, the scale factors where you need some iteration to calculate. So um, 
to uh, upsize from equivalence static base shift result and the response spectrum result. The model combination control is where you can choose to add the direction side to the result, as well as choose between different seismic analysis method. Note, for adding the signs to the result, there's two options. You can add along the major mode directions or along the absolute maximum value. If select along the absolute maximum value, it can be the maximum value in different directions, which can cause an abnormal deformation in the model, where selecting along the major mode application directions will give you a real deformed shape under seismic loading. It's good to note that seismic uh, acts in both directions. So sometimes um, breaking down the uh, load um, result checks um, for dead load, live load, and seismic load, then add it together to find the maximum moment demand, rather than um, purely uh, rely on the load combination you get in the model. It's a good practice. To find the natural period for the structure, it is important to check the mode participation mass to see what percentage of mass is contributed under a particular mode. In this case, the first mode is the longitudinal seismic case, and mode two is the transverse seismic case. You can also identify this through looking at the deformed shape of the structures. This can be accessed through clicking on the mode shape button. After you've found the right natural frequency, you can use the standard to calculate the response spectrum profile and apply it in my decibel. And with some iteration of seismic load comparison between the output from response spectrum and equivalent static phase shear, you can find the right scale factor to apply to the longitudinal and transverse seismic case. This complete the seismic analysis part. For this bridge structure, temperature effect has also been taken into consideration. Section 3.4.6 in the New Zealand Bridge Menu outlines the load application for both uniform temperature change and differential temperature change. In my decibel, I apply the uniform temperature difference at element temperature load. Because it, this is a steel composite bridge, I apply the uniform temperature of plus and minus 25 degrees Celsius. For different temperature, differential temperature, the application becomes a bit complicated. In the end, I choose to apply beam section temperature with the section time being a PC composite. I calculate the temperature gradient using Excel with bridge manual code and the Australian standard 5100.2 for negative temperature gradient. Then I apply the temperature along the full depth of the steel composite girder. Because the bridge is spanning over a river stream, so a unique load case is the water flow loading. This load case is to capture the water flow load through the piers in both the transverse and longitudinal directions. I use the Australian standard 5100.2 section 16 to determine the design drag force for applying in my decibel. The forcing is applied in both longitudinal and transverse direction to cover the critical case scenarios. This was translated into line load on the piles and piers. When we did the analysis of the bridge, we found the water load to be insignificant when compared to seismic and wind load, so it did not govern for the bridge design. For the design shape, with the help from MIDA Civil, we used the Australian standard 5100.6, the New Zealand Transport Agency RR, bridge manual, for the main bridge and a British standard for spices shape. So we basically extract um, data from MIDAS through the result tables and then use spreadsheet to conduct the design check for the bridge. For using the wizard, moving load analysis and response spectrum, we're able to complete the design check for the bridge within the allowed time frame, which proves the efficiency of MIDAS civil and particularly the steel composite wizard for design. A good practice to just is to understand the MIDAS result table data. So you can extract it from Excel and uh, process it to find the required line. It is a good practice to use the result table to extract the load loading rather than the model itself because you, the value you get are more accurate. The result displayed in the model is a good for understanding the behavior of the structures and where the critical loads are located and where the result table gives you access accurate demand value. The 
the bearing design can be checked directly from the model. To check this, you first identify the elastic links that represent those bearings. Then go to the result table, click on elastic link to activate the result table for the bearings. The spreadsheet data shows those that the elastic link or bearing is transferring from the superstructure down to the substructure via different low case. You can sort the loading directly from the table or export it to the Excel to do data processing in order to find the critical load for the bearing design. And we use that to compare uh, with the loadings that the uh, designer provided to make sure that uh, our model output um, gives a similar output as what the designer proposed. And that concludes um, this webinar on how I designed um, the three span steel composite eye girder bridge using my visible. And now we open for questions. So uh, I received a question that says, is it a beam element or play element? So steel composite was a set up the uh, model as a grillage model. So it's a beam element. Um, so let's let go into the actual model um, because there's a question on the frequency of this bridge. You can see um, that the frequency of the bridge is um, 0 0.42 uh, in the longitudinal seismic and 0 0.57. So the natural period of 1.75 for the transverse. I'm trying to see the questions. Okay. So the power cap is play element. So let's take a look at the actual model. is in the play element and I use elastic link to connect the pier to the um, power cap and piles. So for the um, crack the links of the concrete dig, we actually did um, a separate dig only model um, to check the um, dig um, reinforcement capacity. So, um, so for checking um, the response spectrum and equivalent static method, um, we first look at the resultant force from uh, the seismic load. Um, so I will go to reactions and look at the long-term and transverse um, EQ value from MIDAS and then um, input uh, into a spreadsheet to um, compare it with uh, equivalent static um, and determine base shear scale factor and then apply it in the response spectrum low case. So over here. So for this bridge, um, Long Chuno had a, um, an increase of um, 3%. Um, with transverse being one. So um, because we peer reviewed this bridge, uh, we um, didn't um, check as a Stratton time method, uh, but we confirmed that um, the designer used the Stratton time method to check the bridge on the power cap.
So the thick um, topping is um, precast with 125 mil thickness and the cast in situ concrete on top. Um, so this um, thick was created using um, actual wizard. So let me just go back to uh, the wizard part. Uh, give me a sec. So you can define um, under the sections. Um, I believe we um, modeled as a single deck rather than um, doing two staging, but we did model like the wet concrete pool and the actual cast institute. So, so um, that is covering the construction stage analysis. So how do I model the pier and hit stock? So as you can see in the section, properties. Um, there's a bottom part of the pier and uh, the top part of the pier has a pier columns. In the actual property, um, we import it from um, AutoCAD. So we draw the sections in actual AutoCAD and imported the, the top and bottom of the pier um, using a tapered. So this way, uh, we're able to um, make sure that, that the shape um, of the pier is uh, what's actually being designed. Um, so from memory, um, the period of the pier will was about four to uh, two to four weeks. Um, Um, so we used um, uh, linear analysis um, rather than non-linear analysis because we believe that the bridge is um, can be moving in both um, both directions, and um, it was a design check. So it was mainly checking whether the soil spring that the designer applied um, is um, uh, is um, as we intended it to behave. Uh, CAD model. So let me see if I can find it. Just give me a sec. I don't. I don't think um it's readily as accessible. Uh, um, but it will just be like a. Uh, so basically section drawn. So if I just show uh, this part of the pier, you can see that this, um, this shape on top So I guess we can show the steel wizard as, as well um, to, to kind of go through some of the inputs. Um, um, if I can, sorry. My computer won't let me do it. Um, it's not, I couldn't access on my laptop. Um, oh. Um, if there's any other questions, um, like a good thing to check is you can see the all the outputs. Um, it's um, very complex, so um, there's a lot of section involved. And what still 
um, composite wizard helps is to uh, reduce um, the likelihood of um, um, misapplied uh, section. Um, and because you can see it's all in composite. So, so it set up all the cross beams very easily. So if I turn off the turn off the deck, you can see all the grillage uh, sitting on the cross cross beams and the main girders uh, or all um, the right section properties and um, we also applied a, a section scale factors to um, to cover the behavior of the bridge under seismic conditions And um, maybe I can go through the construction staging part as well. So in the node construction staging, um, the composite section properties are all set up over here. The shear lag effect was considered um, as through the effect of width. So you can see that um, We apply the effective width scale factor, which you can found over here in this, um, this composite bridge effective width. So um, we use um, a different standard for the modeling part, but we also did um, uh, manual calculations based on the Australian standards to um, capture the effect of shear lag. So this is all applied in the effective width scale factor. Any other question? Yeah, so sediment load case is applied um, as four uh, scenarios and we take the worst case scenarios for this case and the result um, of the bridge under sediment. I'm just trying to find the that low case. Maybe um, should be in there. Um, but I couldn't. Let's go to um, the next question, um, the wind load application. And I'll see if I can manage to see um, the wind load application, the, um, the settlement part. The wind load is applied as um, UDR on the top of the deck level for the superstructure. And then at the pier, 
is for as a line load um, applier across the two peers. The settlement is um, over here. Um, I can't really show the deformation of it, um, but it's applied in the west abutment, west pier, east up pier, and east abutment um, with the one um, UIS case that we use to check all the, um, the effect of settlement. So um, we also um, look at the petition with traffic as well um, along um, the petition traffic um, along the single eye girder to uh, see the effect of it and um, apply the straight traffic plane to simulate the scenario where um, a car might um, um, bypass the pedestrian um, traffic uh, area to simulate the worst case scenario. Uh, we also modeled the, the viewing deck over here as uh, another beam uh, element extension. And for the moving load, I guess it's worth to show that um, we choose to um, use cross beams and use cross beam groups um, for uh, having the moving load trans transferred or into the cross beams and then down to uh, the bearings and substructures. And as this is more, um, it reflects what the reality the bridge is going to experience. So we can have a look at the bearing table. Um, So we use a general um, elastic link and, um, and apply the free flow and guided bearing. Um, so because it was a uh, design review, we didn't like um, using the actual design bearing stiffness, but we apply like fixity uh, where the bridge shouldn't move and uh, free flow for the for the bearings that allows the bridge to expand under temperature creep and shrinkage. It was in conjunction in um, uh, manual cal, but we didn't use the steel composite uh, design um, because um, currently the standard um, doesn't have a New Zealand um, bridge manual. So what we instead is um, Build the model up to a stage where um, you um, you have the uh, non-composite and composite scenarios inbuilt in the model, and um, extract the uh, the load data from MIDAS, and uh, did a manual design calculation based on the uh, Australian standard uh, is by one zero zero point six. So I will also just open up the construction staging um, to, to show what we applied in the construction staging. So when we did the substructure stage, we activate the whole substructure um, and then apply, uh, op, uh, activate all the boundary conditions, the power spring, power support, pier cap link, abutment link, mm -hmm. and then um, with the self weight of the bridge uh, in the first stage, and then we um, activate the girders and the bracing along the mid span girders and um, apply uh, the boundary condition like the rigid links. Um, then uh, we activate the abutment spans 
and then the abutment bearing bearing girders and abutment span girder props. And then um, activate the main span of the girder. And then as um, um, a lot of staging on the wet concrete pour. And then um, just going through all that, then do the composite actions, which we also apply the uh, so, um, superimposed signal like barrier utilities and barrier surface. And then we deactivate the construction staging mode at the composite stage. And then um, deactivated the um, SDL long term. Um, so temporary support, is there if you elaborate a bit more about the temporary support? So construction loading, um, we can um, see in the construction stage analysis. Um, so we have two types of load, one is barrier and one's rearing surface. Um, this is all captured um, in the construction staging. And um, it can be um, applied using the steel composite wizard. So uh, we have about four minutes before the webinar ends. Any other questions? Yeah, the self-weight function of MIDAS is used for like, automatic computation of self-weight. Um, and I guess um, a good thing to point out is, depending on your structures, you can, um, you can easily use um, a simple uh, weight or more accurate calculation and this is under the structure type and so so under structure type make sure you turn the self weight into masses so um to get the self weight output in my visible and um from memory i believe consistent mass is more um, accurate way of calculating so if you have a very sophisticated structure and you want to get a more accurate output then make sure you turn on that instead of long mass. So ship impact load was applied. So under side static load case 20 and 21, um, we applied a nodal load. Um, and an interesting fact is about the bridge is um, the Tsunami uh, load case was also discussed, but um, the the outcome of that is, is the bridge itself would not be able to um, handle tsunami um, load case, and this was um, um, a balance between economy um, and bridge sufficient design. Yeah, so uh, you can see the ship impact load is applied at both directions. Any other question? Alice? Mm, okay. Hi, uh, I, have a, I have a question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, go I, can, I can see the breaking and traction load in the low cases. Oh, mm. uh, yes. Step. Yeah. Carried out from the booby load tracer function, or we just input that with manually? Um, I believe it was um, from moving tracer. So we did look at um, mm. uh, how the moving load behaves and um, apl applied that. But I think it's also come with a design check. So we, we mm. review all the design. Um, assumptions that um, designer makes and then um, verify it on how you okay. I think you can um, wrap it up. No. Okay. No. So um yeah so this is um how I modeled the uh, three span steel composite I bridge. Um 
um, hope everyone found something interesting or learned something that you um, can apply to uh, build your own bridge models. And it's a great pleasure um, to be here and share um, this uh, piece of work that I did back in my first year at uh, ACOM. Um, and uh, feel free to uh, send, um, email me or uh, ask me any questions or if you have any feedbacks about presentations or things um, um, that we can all do better um, when it comes to um, uh, doing finite animal modeling, then please let me know. Um, thanks very everyone for your time uh, and appreciate it, Midas, for providing me with this opportunity. So, thank you. Thank you. All right. Ooh.